Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you guys have been enjoying your weekend, having a great Sunday afternoon, great Sunday evening, or whenever you're watching this video. This is going to be a longer video. We're going to break down what is likely going to be a severe weather outbreak starting tomorrow afternoon for the South Central U.S., and then going into areas like Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama as we get into our Tuesday. Then there's going to be another event probably for the Carolinas, Georgia for Wednesday. The severity level for that event, we're just not quite sure on, but we will know a little bit more about that event probably getting into tomorrow. So there's a lot to talk about. There is the potential for a tornado outbreak for some folks. Uh, there's a moderate risk out for Tuesday, which they think that event's going to be a little bit worse than the event tomorrow, but there's a lot to discuss. So if you guys have not subscribed, guys, it goes a long way. It really does, and I really appreciate the support. I know my setup probably isn't as appealing as an, and as nice as a lot of other people who do what I do, but I appreciate people who just watch and tune in regardless. So like the video if you like it. It goes a long way. I really appreciate that. And uh, hit me up on social media. I try to retweet as much people's content as possible. By the way, there's a lot of people on YouTube that do a really good job of going live during these events. They're just, you know, posted up on their computer at home trying to alert people. There's a, a lot of names that come uh, that come to mind. Ryan Hall being a big guy who does it, who's really good at what he does. So definitely have a way to get alerts, you know. If you're not going to look at a radar, have a way. I feel like it's important for me to mention this in the mid in the, the beginning of the video. There's a lot of people who do a great job. And I will be out in the field. I will be chasing uh, for Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm going to have off work, and I'm going to be out in the field trying to give you all some live updates and things like that. So before we get going, if you guys got anything I can pray about, please put in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over them. It gives others an opportunity to do so, too. So there's a lot of people that's going to have a lot of storm anxiety, which is a real thing. So uh, we're obviously praying for everybody who's going to be infected by this storm. So let's get rolling here. There's a lot to discuss. Longer video. Stay with me, guys. Okay, I'm going to show you all kinds of things. So if you're wondering about your specific location, I'm going to break down Texas first. Then we're going to move into Mississippi and Alabama, Louisiana. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the Southeast. We'll be able to talk a little bit more on that tomorrow. So right now, enhanced risk for severe storms. So that's level three out of five. That is for tomorrow morning lasting to Tuesday morning. And this is because of this 10% chance of a tornado of 25 miles in any given location. Basically, the same region has enhanced 10% risk. So that is a chance, same probability to see a stronger tornado. I'm talking EF2 to EF5. The damaging wind threat is big too, along with any enhanced risk, as this will congeal into a squall line later into the overnight hours, moving into eastern Texas into areas of western Louisiana. But the big threat with this also, and it can't be overlooked, is the big time hell threat with this. There is This is going to be one of them setups where uh, supercells are going to explode a, along a dry line, what we call in a dry line is basically a difference as an air mass. you got a very moist air mass uh, mashing up against a very dry air mass. That's what we call the dry line. And normally when that happens, you have explosive thunderstorm development with huge updrafts. And basically that causes very large hail. So we're going to have probably some, you know, some uh, definitely some uh, tennis ball size hail, probably maybe a report of baseball size hail. It is going to be big time hail from Austin, Texas, Waco, maybe even San Antonio, big time hellers with this. And then the tornado threat ramps up, you know, like I just mentioned, those same kind of areas, but maybe a little bit more east. So let's take a little bit closer look at this. Uh, so you know there's more how all the cities put in this enhanced risk. College Station, Austin, Texas, um, Livingston, all these towns, Hillsboro, Texas, all these areas in enhanced risk have the best case to see um, better chances when I'm trying to say of severe weather. But I'm watching to see if this enhanced risk gets extended a little bit further north into Dallas, Texas. We'll see how this goes. But really, you know, you expect some bad storms to explode right in here and there, or basically tomorrow afternoon. So let's talk about areas for your Tuesday threat for this moderate risk. So this has some better ingredients together to be more of a substantial severe weather event, especially for tornadoes. So right now this is for day three, so we don't know the actual actual uh, chances for each individual severe weather threat. But right now, this purple area, I know it might be a little hard to see on your screen because names of towns is kind of going over the percent. But that purple area is a 45% chance to see severe weather in this area right in here of 25 miles in any given location. That is a high chance. I mean, it's basically 50% chance. you got a 50-50 chance to see severe weather criteria storms. So let's get a little bit closer look at that, uh, courtesy of the Storm Prediction Center. 
And these areas right here have that moderate risk. Guys, this does have the potential to get upgraded to a level five out of five risk, which is that high risk. It's usually, well, it is, it's in pink. So it's very eye popping, but it's already at moderate risk. I believe this has only happened one other time. I think maybe I might be wrong. Somebody correct me. I'm not good with the historic stuff when it comes to these um, outlooks, but Baton Rouge is included with this. Macomb, uh, Hattiesburg, Jackson, Mississippi, all these areas are included in this moderate risk. So this is a dangerous setup, guys, and this is getting real, really fast. So let's take a look at what is going on on Water Vapor Loop. Nothing's going on in the eastern U.S. You know, that system has finally moved off the uh, eastern seaboard, but this is the next system. You can see the swirl down here in the southwest. There's a little bit of a swirl. That is the water vapor loop telling us uh, where this system is, and this is going to continue to move into New Mexico and Texas here in the coming, coming next several hours. So what's going on here is you've got this bowling ball of an upper level low. This is usually the setups to promote a big time severe weather outbreak for areas of the south. So this is going, we're getting into Monday morning. This is a big time bowling ball. And as it drops down, it pushes winds out the southwest, west south, west southwest from this direction, dry air funneling in. And then it's pushing winds out the south directly. That warm, uh, moist air coming out the Gulf of Mexico sets up what we call a moist sector in this area of eastern Texas as we're getting into Monday afternoon, Monday evening. This continues to work its way to the east as this upper level low continues to pull that low level moisture, that big time dew points in the 60s, close to 70, into areas of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. And then we'll continue through your Wednesday and we'll do the same kind of deal in the southeast Georgia, the Carolinas, maybe even up to Virginia. The severe weather threat will continue. So let's get going here. We're about to get into the meat of this video. So stick with me. I'm going to look at Pivotal Weather, weathermodels.com, all the forecast models. So Pivotal Weather does a, a, a bad job of kind of delaying. It takes a, about three seconds for me to, for it to pull up the graph. So stick with me, okay? Um, there's a lot to talk about. So this is for about midnight tonight, tonight. So overnight tonight, dew points already starting to sur surge in response to these winds moving out the southwest or west uh, south. Suddenly winds, Just let's just leave it at that. So as we're getting, we're waking up Monday morning, you'll notice in central Texas, the Gulf, down here in southeast Texas, you'll wake up, it's sticky, it feels like storms tomorrow morning as you're waking up. Dew points, this moist sector begins to surge all the way up to Dallas, Texas. You'll notice, for example, in Dallas, Austin, it will get more and more humid throughout the early morning, the, the late morning hours and the early afternoon hours. That is the instability building, that is the dew points rising into the 60s, close to 70 down here in Houston. And not only are you going to have a severe weather threat with this, is there so much to talk about? There is a big time flooding risk with this too. You've got so much uh, moisture content building in this. Uh, P, uh, uh, these uh, water values are ri rising pretty high. You've got some, a very moist atmosphere, a lot of water in the atmosphere. Just think of it like this. And so you're going to have an atmosphere that is not going to be capped much, which means convection explodes at will which means you're going to have a lot of rain falling, a lot of heavy rain. So we'll see how that limits any kind of severe weather for your for your Monday or your Tuesday because it does have a factor. But let's not get way ahead of ourselves right here. But check it out. Dew points rising into the 60s. Um, and this is the moist air. In response to this moist air, this continues, moist sector, this is where that dry line sets up. Dew points right here to the west into the 20s, the 30s and 20s, dew points to the east, into the 60s and 70s. You see how this tight gradient sets up here? That is our dry line. Storms explode just east of this, and they go absolutely insane when this happens. You know, sometimes it happens in Texas, happens in Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, all the way up into the Dakotas. It happens all the time, especially when you get into the severe weather season. This continues to move. It's a slow mover. The low-level jet gets ramped up. And the moist sector is very slow to move. So that worries me for flooding overnight, tomorrow night into Tuesday for eastern Texas and Louisiana. But this continues. So we'll go on and switch over and look at cake. In response to all those that low-level moisture, you get a spike in surface-based cake. So convective values as we're getting into tomorrow, right along that dry line where that those dew points are well into the 60s, pushing 70. You get cake values that explode in excess of 2,000 joules per kilogram in areas that provides juice to the atmosphere. Those updrafts start building. Big time hail explodes with this with these big time cape environments. These 
I mean, there will be some nasty storms that develop along this dry line. If you're watching in your Mississippi, Alabama, please stay tuned. We're going to talk about you guys, too. It's very important to mention this. Um, this continues, right? The Cape value is exploding. And then as the atmosphere stabilizes overnight, you lose that convective juice, but it continues to keep going. You know, it's a very moving, slow-moving sector of uh, dynamics, uh, that, that moisture, those, uh, that Cape convective levels, um, uh, that low-level jet that I'm about to show you here. And here it comes. The low-level jet in place, as we're starting off here overnight tonight, getting into tomorrow morning, the low-level jet gets ramped up. A southerly low-level jet pushing 60, 70 knots in areas really gets ramped up. It slows down in response to this low pressure, really slowing down. And, I mean, you can have tornadoes all in this area. It just depends on how the storm mode is going to go. Storm mode meaning, are you going to have a lot of, in the weather world we call it crap vection, because you just have a lot of convection that really builds into this region. And sometimes that can choke up discrete supercells. So it could help to limit um, the storm mode, meaning it could help tamper down the tornado threat and really become a big time flooding threat. Now, I'm not trying to downplay the tornado threat because it is real, but there is a what we call failure mode, which means uh, there could be an event with a tornado aspect of this event for Monday might not develop as big as maybe Tuesday does. And that is why you only have an enhanced risk for now. And I think it might get upgraded to a moderate risk for sure, especially a hell-driven moderate risk. But that is right why you only have an enhanced risk for tomorrow and not a moderate risk like you do for um, Tuesday. But low-level jet wraps up. That puts a veering in the atmosphere. You got winds on one side of this screaming Mid-level, the mid-level jet probably out the west-southwest, a low-level jet out the south that puts a veering to the atmosphere, especially a low-level veering, low-level shear, spins the atmosphere, creates an environment favorable for, tor for tornadoes. So let's go on and look at this radar and what this looks like because of this. And I know we're, we're 12 minutes into the video and we're just looking at the radar. But here we go. Going forward here, notice this is for really late Monday morning, uh, tomorrow afternoon, look at all this convection ahead of the main show. So that can help stabilize the atmosphere. We see, we will see, there's going to be so much dynamics in play that the atmosphere is going to have a lot of time to recover. But how much time does it have to recover? But we'll see this. There is going to be a severe weather threat with all these storms too. But really, it's right here, right around 22Z, which is around, give or take, mid-afternoon tomorrow across eastern Texas, central to eastern Texas. Storms explode along this dry line. Watch out Austin, Texas. Watch out Dallas, too, especially just south of Dallas. Maybe San Antonio gets lucky enough to where these storms explode just east of y'all, but these storms will have the chance to be very photogenic, very dangerous, and produce significantly large hail, and they will have the chance to produce tornadoes. Now, how much steam do they continue to, to live off of as they get into the evening hours? We're not sure, but I think there will be a good three to four hour period where these will be very dangerous storms before they congeal later in the evening hours and overnight hours into a more, more of a line of storms as they move into far eastern Texas and then areas of northern Louisiana, even Arkansas could be in the severe weather. And then the low level jet really slows down. So this is when you can have training of nasty storms, maybe more storms develop as you're getting into the overnight hours tomorrow morning. And then maybe another line of storms gets going. So the slowness of this storm throws kind of a wrench in the forecast, I really think. But it really helps to really be, be, become a substantial flash flooding risk for eastern Texas, anybody in eastern Texas. So we'll have to watch how that unfolds. But the significant tornado parameter, which I don't always like to show this because it's just kind of blah to me. But um, it shows this. It has as high as a seven or eight on the STB, uh, STP value, which tells us, you know, think of this, the higher the number, the higher chance of seeing uh, tornadoes. And you really see it explode along this dry line with these supercells that are going to develop. So this will continue, elevate a tornado threat even into the overnight hours for sure. So now we're going to switch to the threat for Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama as we get into Tuesday. So same situation. you got a big time moist sector that builds in response to this upper level low to its north and northwest. A moist sector building into the morning hours. You'll notice when you're waking up Tuesday morning in southern Louisiana, 
all of Louisiana, southern Mississippi, central Mississippi. This is a classic looking warm sector. A dew points rising into the 70s and 60s, very moist. That's one dynamic ingredient that you need for severe weather. Then we're getting into the late morning, early afternoon hours. This is as far as the HRR model goes, which is about noon time, um, <clears throat> um, central standard time. And dew points are rising into the 60s and 70s across almost the entire state of Mississippi. Dangerous environment for one dangerous element to create a severe weather event. We go on and switch over and look at the Cape in response to those high dew points. Same situation. We get going in time, getting into Tuesday morning. Look at the Cape values that explode. And the H-Triple-R model only, only goes out to about, um, I'm sorry, around 1, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Think of it. It's going to be give or take an hour, depending on the speed. We don't know exactly the timing of this, obviously. But see this area right in here? See this Cape building? The line of storms, and I'm about to show you the, the radar depiction here in a second. The line of storms is back here. You notice how the atmosphere gets basically non-Cape environment. That The atmosphere stabilizes as the line of storms moves through. But ahead of this, in the sector of dynamics that are very favorable for severe weather, you have Cape values that are reaching well over 2,000 joules per kilogram surface Cape. And that is in a sector ahead of the squall line, which I'm about to show you, that could really kick off some isolated, discrete supercells ahead of the main line of storms for your Tuesday afternoon. And we'll look at the low-level jet. Same situation. Low-level jet moves overhead. We're getting into Tuesday. I mean, severe storms are going to be gone going in the beginning of the forecast period. So the moderate threat will be valid for, tomorrow, for Tuesday morning, not just Tuesday afternoon across Dixie. So... Low-level jet really starts to ramp up and suddenly winds right here. The front moves through, switches winds out the west. But along the line right here, low-level jet's ramping up, but right in here. Nasty. I'm about to show you a sounding towards the here in a second. But right in here, this is where the nasty environment for supercell is going to form. And I'll show you that when I'm meaning here right now. As we're getting into Tuesday, we're getting past the Texas event, getting into Tuesday morning. Here comes the line of storms developing, right? Not developing, they're already put together. I wish it would not do that here. <laughs> We're getting into Tuesday, Tuesday morning. This is the line of storms right here, moving into Louisiana, Arkansas, and about to move into Tennessee. Behind this line of storms, the atmosphere stabilizes. You're good, no severe weather threat, but ahead of it and along it, nasty weather. And these are the storms you watch in southern Mississippi, even this area of Louisiana and around Baton Rouge. What kind of storms develop in this warm sector, this moist sector right here. You see these cells developing right here? It's going to be very interesting to see what the next few HRRR models do with these storms that develop. We call them prefrontal storms that develop in a ripe atmosphere for tornadic supercells. So these are the most dangerous storms right here. And there's going to be a tornado threat on its own along with the storms, but this will be more of a damaging um wind threat. But anything that develops right here is going to be very significant and dangerous. And we'll have to see what it looks like. That's why there's a moderate risk right in this region. But it could get extended a little further east. We'll see how that happens here. We keep on moving significant tornado parameter in this region. As you know, we'll get all the way into the last frame, only 48 hours out. It begins to spike. Uh, values reaching five, six, seven on the significant tornado parameter. Remember, just think of it, the higher the number, the higher the chance for tornadoes. But you notice these little blobs right here of the higher colors, um, the brighter colors, which means you're getting into these oranges, these reds right here. And those are the prefrontal storms we really have to watch out for. So we look at this. This is a sounding out of um, uh, southern Mississippi. One thing I've been mentioning the last couple of days is the fact that it looked like the column was very moist meaning these dew points were riding the temperature boundary, meaning you had a moist profile all the way up to 200 millibars, which is several, 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 several thousand feet up in the atmosphere. I'm talking well above 10,000 feet up in the atmosphere. Moist advection at the 850s, you know, moist advection at all levels of the atmosphere. What, what that happens is it allows for just convection to fire at will. So you have a lot of convection firing up. So that helps to choke out individual discrete supercells. What I'm noticing on the latest HRRR model is that you have a little dry air aloft uh, several thousand feet up in the air. When I say several, not, not three or four, well up in the atmosphere. So that tells me that you, it allows for some uh, mid from steep lapse rates, which help for tornado development, uh, aids in the development for tornadoes. 
you have this looping hodograph, which you pretty much have this in all areas of this severe weather event. And obviously you can just look at the hazard type. It says Tor, so conditions are favorable for tornadoes, but you have Cape building in this area, veering in the low levels of the atmosphere, winds um, at the low levels screaming out the south, and then at the mid levels coming out the southwest. So you have a turning in the atmosphere, which allows for tornado development. There's a lot more that goes into this. I'm always learning when it comes to soundings. I'm probably an average guy when it comes to looking at soundings. I don't pretend to be with somebody I'm not. Y'all know that. You know I keep it real with you guys, but it's a learning environment. But I can tell you with dew points well into the mid to upper 60s, surface temperature is pushing 80 degrees ahead of this line. This is a sounding ahead of this line. Um, atmosphere ripe for tornadoes. So one thing I'll mention, significant rain threat here. A moderate risk for flash flooding occurring. This is basically a moderate risk is at least a 40% chance of fl flash flooding occurring in this area in eastern Texas and northwest Louisiana. So I'm telling you guys, flooding risk is real. I'm telling you, so it doesn't need to be overlooked. It's even bigger for day three, which is where you have the chance for the most significant severe weather. It's a large region. Flash flooding. You're going flooding is going to be a big time risk, guys. So keep that in mind. This is for Tuesday. The chances for flash flooding are is I wouldn't say it's just as a big of a deal, but they are a significant deal. We'll talk a little bit more on that probably in the next couple of videos. But there's also 15% risk. This is basically a slight risk at day four. This is including a large chunk of Georgia, the Panhandle, and northern sections of Florida, and the Carolinas, and then southeast Virginia. In response to this, we can look at the basic things. I'll stop this for about early afternoon Wednesday. Dew points, that moist sector, knows the stable air after the last couple of days of severe weather to the west. Moist sector builds into the Carolinas, atmosphere ripe as far as the moist air for severe weather. I will be chasing this for my local area also as after I move back east from chasing Mississippi. Um, low level jet, you got a low level jet pushing 60 to 70 knots in this region. But the concerning thing is, and I'm just looking at the GFS, the concerning thing is, is the Cape values. Look down here in South Carolina, with that moist air dew points well into the 60s, um, <clears throat> that low level jet around watch out an enhanced risk might get introduced in this region right here cape values when you start to get a thousand joules per kilogram and then you mix in all those other uh, ingredients i just mentioned that's when you really have an atmosphere right for severe weather so that's all i got guys um i hope that you know you you took some things from this video please stay safe out there of course i have an update in the morning i'll have one last big update tomorrow evening and then after that i'll be on the road and I'll try to get out in it and stay safe for you guys at the same time, obviously. But God bless all y'all. Have a great Sunday evening, and I'll talk to y'all soon.